All right, folks, welcome back to the next episode of Rocket Science 101. All right, folks, so today we're going to be discussing the different types of rocket engines. Only an introduction, though, not a deep overview. So today, let's go ahead and take a look at how a rocket actually flies through the sky. Okay. All right, so how does a rocket actually fly through the sky? Well, we're going to model a rocket engine right here. So here's the engine, the back of a rocket. And let's say this is uh, the exit chamber and maybe there's some material stored in the inside maybe some kind of fuel or oxidizer now here's what happens okay L look out for the aha moment here what's happening is you've got a lot of air coming through the front of the rocket right imagine the rocket is going this way so it's hitting a lot of air in the front so a lot of this air is bending around the rocket and just observing and it's hitting the front of the rocket like this now what's happening? Let's label the velocity of one of these air particles V sub A. On the other hand, there's the actual engine of the rocket which produces an exhaust velocity V sub E. For the rocket to actually fly, and yesterday we talked about rocket stability during flight, for the rocket to fly, what needs to happen? The velocity of the incoming air needs to be less than or greater than or equal to? Well, it needs to be less than the exhaust velocity. So what happens right here is when the exhaust velocity is greater than the velocity of the incoming air you've got thrust that is greater than the drag force acting on the rocket and so when your thrust is greater than your drag force then you have a net force and hence an acceleration and hence the rocket is moving here's another way to look at it another way to perceive it is as such here's our engine once again and our engine is here's our exit chamber and maybe there's some oxidizer or fuel or whatnot stored inside here what happens is all of this fuel is stored inside of the rocket you see this is why the rocket is so special the reason why a rocket is special is because all the fuel is stored inside that's why a rocket can work anywhere based on Newton's first law based on the change in momentum a rocket can work anywhere it can work under the sea it can work in the air it can even work in a vacuum such as space that's why a rocket is so useful in so many scenarios in so many uh, versatilities so here's what happens the exhaust is stored in the rocket with a velocity of zero and then when the rocket is ready for launch when it starts its launch sequence usually at t minus nine seconds it's going to start boosting away this exhaust velocity in the form of gas propellant okay and so there you go there's your exhaust velocity okay great so that's how a rocket flies through the sky based on newton's first law based on the principle of conservation of momentum based on the exhaust velocity being greater than the incoming air's velocity now what we're going to look at is a model rockets inside okay so here's a rocket i'm going to draw it right here so here's our let's let's use white uh so here's my rocket right here you've got the nose cone up here on the top of the rocket remember we talked about stability and nose cones um we've got the exhaust chamber right here here's where the gases exit the rocket and of course if the rocket needs usually it will have some kind of fins right so here are the fins of the rocket uh here are the fins for stability purposes here is the right fin also for stability purposes for pushing the center of pressure back behind the center of gravity okay so what's happening here okay well first thing we've got is right here right here we've got something special and that's the fuel okay the fuel of the rocket will be right here to the right so that's going to be our fuel okay and that fuel is going to mix with what that fuel is going to mix with the oxidizer which is stored in a separate chamber until the rod rocket is ready to burst until it's ready to go up so here's the oxidizer and there's going to be pipes a lot of pipes leading these two to mix together inside one chamber and what's that chamber going to be that chamber is going to be this one this right here is the combustion chamber okay this is the combustion combustion chamber okay and right here on the very top of the rocket what are we going to have well you can either have payload you can have your crew um typically in the nose cone we'll store some kind of uh some kind of payload or crew so let's go ahead and denote that so here's our payload and 
over here above the oxidizer and fuel what are we going to have above the oxidizer and fuel you can have a couple of things but it's standard to have some high pressure gases right here okay so here are some high pressure pressure gases okay pressure gas okay and so what happens after the fuel and the oxidizer mix okay after the fuel is oxidized in the combustion chamber you've got a whole lot of gas this gas is um, converted into a very high velocity uh, pro uh, propellant uh, as it exits this uh, chamber on the back of the rocket and what you have is your exit velocity through the back of the rocket and that exit velocity has to be greater than the incoming air's velocity which is around here which is around the nose of the rocket that's v sub a so when v sub b is greater than v sub a the rocket will have thrust which is greater than its drag and when thrust is greater than drag there's a net force when there's a net force there's a net acceleration and the rocket will start moving thanks for watching this episode of rocket science 101 we'll check you out in the next one sponsored by brilliant and Ottawa. ambition plus mko plus scaffolding you will learn Excuse me. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. And the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that you too can, can become, become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.